My name is Alex Dorgen. I'm an Ansible solution specialist. And today I'm going to talk about VS Code and how I leverage the Ansible extension to help me write my playbooks and integrate with my source control repository. So why do I leverage VS Code? So VS Code is an IDE, an integrated development environment provided by Microsoft, a free product, but it does have an extension specifically that leverages an Ansible language server. The reason why I really like this is it provides a lot of extra capability that your standard command line tools like VI or Vim or Nano aren't going to provide. So it gives you the ability to do some syntax highlighting so I can make sure that I'm using modules that are accurate or I'm using the correct parameters that exist. Um, it also gives you the ability to auto completion so I can type part of a module name and just hit tab and it will fully complete that module name. Especially there's a checkbox in there that I'll talk about that has the capability to add in the fully qualified collection name. So I don't necessarily have to type in Microsoft.Azure.Azure VM. I can just type in the module itself, hit tab, and it will fill in that full portion for me. There's also some capability integrated where I can click on the particular module and hit control if I'm on Windows or command if I'm on a Linux box uh, and that module and it will bring me to kind of that Python code and documentation so I don't need to dive into other resources to figure out exactly what that module can do and examples for it. One of the things that I really like is that I can leverage the execution environments that I've created. This is great for me because now I know exactly what modules are available to me as I'm coding, not the entirety of Ansible that exists out there. There are plenty of technologies that I do not automate today, so I don't need to have that capability. And it also helps as I'm writing modules, if I try to leverage a collection that I do not have installed in my execution environment, I will find out very quickly because of that syntax highlighting and autocomplete that it isn't available to me. So as I go through this, I have done some pre-work. So I have both Ansible and Ansible Navigator installed on my laptop and I'm leveraging Docker as well. And I'll show both of those as we go through this. I do have my execution environment that I leveraged today pulled into my environment. And then I do have Git installed. That is my source control uh, management tool. And I have Git cloned down all the different repositories that I use, which at this point, is a quite extensive list. But I'll walk through some of those pieces and see how that all integrates together. So to start off, I have, as I mentioned, already installed Ansible and Ansible Navigator. So as you can see, I'm not necessarily running the latest version of Ansible, but I do have both Ansible and Ansible Navigator uh, installed on my laptop. And I do have Git installed as well. And I've gone through the process of Git cloning all of my different repositories that I leverage on a fairly regular basis that I've then imported into VS Code. I also do have Docker up and running. And as you can see, I do have, in this case, my personal execution environment already pulled down and up and ready to go. But before we get into all that, I do also want us to talk about VS Code itself. So obviously I've gone through the process of downloading VS Code and all I need to do in order to leverage the Ansible extension to begin with is go into the extensions, search for Ansible, and there is this Ansible language support server. Um, I can go through the installation process. Once I do and enable it, I will need to restart VS Code, but then it will be available for me to use. You can edit all kinds of settings. So kind of to start off, it will walk you through, you know, the command actually run Ansible or Ansible Lint or Ansible Navigator, walks through the execution environment process and all those pieces, all, which I do have set up. But for now, I just want to leverage kind of the out of the box capability without using execution environments or without leveraging the fully qualified collection names. So I do have a playbook already up and running. As you can see, I've got workspace and all those and really with VS Code, it's as simple as once I've got that folder that I've cloned, I can just go into VS Code, click file, open folder, click on that folder and pull it in. And then for me, I want all of my repositories in a single workspace. So after I did my first one, I then just did add folder to workspace, added the remaining folders that I leverage into here. And now I have every single Ansible repository that I write to in a single location. I've also gone through the process of tying that into, in my case, my GitHub. So I've got source control set up. I'm not going to walk through that process today because there are so many different source control variants out there. But in my case, I'm leveraging GitHub and I have obviously my credentials so I can properly push back to my appropriate repository. But in this case, as I mentioned, I'm running really the out of the box extension. 
So I've got you know, a playbook that's pre-built, but in this case, maybe I just wanna create a new task. Um, I'm doing things in Azure, so maybe I wanna create an Azure VM, and this may be a great place to leverage some of that autocomplete capability. So I just wanna start typing Azure, and as you can see, all of this information starts popping up. So here are all the available Azure modules that are part of Ansible 2.9 out of the box, because that's really what it's leveraging for a lot of these pieces. So maybe I can find one for virtual machine. Perfect. That Now I've got Azure virtual machine and I can start off with that process. It's great as I start looking into that capability, but maybe that's not enough for what I want to do. I want to go above and beyond just leveraging Ansible 2.9 I want to leverage that capability of execution environments and the collections that I've personally put in there and that I leverage on a day-to-day -day basis. So in this case, I'm going to go back into that extension, go into the settings, and that's where I can start setting up those pieces. So because it is a best practice today to leverage the fully qualified collection names, I do want to check that box. I'm not going to really change anything else other than I'm actually going to say enable the use of execution environments. As you can see, this is that execution environment that I have up and running in Docker. I don't need to change that because that's already set up. But now when I go back into VS Code, so instead of doing Azure Virtual Machine, in this case, I'm gonna start typing Azure again. In the background, it should be actually spinning up and making sure that Docker is running. Um, and it will give you that capability to have autocomplete on this particular process. So you can see it's actually going through the process now of copying the plugin docs directly from my execution environment so this is a brand new execution environment that I just synced over. So it may take a little bit as it goes through that process. But as you can see, all of the available collections for Azure exist in here now. So I can see the actual full capability that's here. So as I said, maybe I still want uh, that virtual machine capability. So maybe I don't remember what collection it is, but I do know there's a virtual machine. I can just highlight down, see in a pane, the description, the requirements, different notes. I'm just gonna hit tab, which will then fill in that particular section. And as you notice, this actually changes to a specific color because this is a valid module that I have access to in my execution environment. So maybe I wanna jump into the documentation to see what parameters are available or see some examples. So I'm gonna hover over it and I'm gonna leverage command because I'm on a Mac, but you could use control if not. And I'm gonna click on that particular module and it's gonna open up the Python documentation for this particular module. So again, I can see the description, I can see all the required options, I can scroll down and see examples as you'd expect for really every module that exists, and if I wanna dive into the detailed Python code, that is available to me as well. So along with that autocomplete, obviously there are specific parameters that apply for each individual module, so I can start typing in this case, I want to leverage VM size, so I can hit tab, or maybe I want to leverage you know, max price, I can hit tab. Again, the highlighting comes in very handy here, so if I had it for some reason this says max prices instead of max price. Notice that the color of this changes, so it's a very easy way for me to visually tell if I've incorrectly entered in a parameter, or as collections change and potentially parameters get deprecated, I can very easily update this and see exactly what's going on. So for me, this is a much easier way to leverage those pieces, leveraging exactly my execution environment as it exists today. So another thing is, I like to know exactly what is available to me. So maybe I think I'm going to expand into Google Cloud, and I wanna see if I have a Google Cloud collection available to me. Well, if you notice, nothing pops up when I search for that. I get a whole bunch of other things, but I do not have any sort of Google modules in my particular execution environment, so they don't show up even as options. So this is great as you're either getting started or you're trying to expand into different teams and users. I'm only giving access to the modules that are available to them inside this execution environment. For me, I'm leveraging this all locally on my laptop, but as you do for any other development environment, I could have this set up in an Ansible server that teams log into and leverage um, as I try to make this a little bit more user-friendly for teams across the board but this is exactly what I leverage to do all of my playbook writing. And then because I have this in Git, once I go through the process of making a change and saving it, so if I just save this at this particular state, my source control will update and it'll say, you know, I'm ready to commit so I can put in my commit message, check a box and then actually sync it. So it will go through the process of pushing it with that particular commit message. So I don't even need to jump to the command line 
in order to manage my repository in any way, shape, or form. There are additional extensions that exist as well. So there are GitHub and GitLab extensions. So if you'd rather do pull requests and things like that, that capability is also available to you. Just know that that's kind of outside the scope of what I'll cover during this talk. But really this gives me a full way to manage my entire Ansible environment. And I've also found nice ways, especially as you start going through, you know, writing a lot of Ansible code, there may be times where I wanna shift multiple pieces of my uh, playbook in order to properly format you know, what's going on. So in this case, maybe I realize that a, an existing task needs to shift over two spaces to the right. So it's improperly formatted. The entire task, not just an individual line, needs to be shifted. So on VS Code or VI, I'd obviously have to do two space on every single line because YAML is a syntax focused language. So tabs do not work. However, because this is specifically designated as Ansible, VS Code is smart enough where if I hit tab, A, it will actually move this entire highlighted section, and B, it will use two spaces because that's what it knows to interpret. So in this case, I'm going to hit tab. It actually in increases two spaces to the right, and it underlines it because this is now improperly formatted, and I can do shift tab and shift it back two spaces to the left. So obviously, I've already properly set mine up to notice that the .yml extension should leverage that Ansible um, extension. So if not, you may notice something different than Ansible down here. So if that's the case, you can just click that particular button, say configure file association for either use .yml or .yaml, depending on what you're leveraging for your best practices. And then I can click Ansible and then every .yml file will be associated with that Ansible extension and all the capabilities that exist inside VS Code. So for me, this is now a one-stop shop to leverage all of my Ansible playbook authoring and testing. I push it directly into Ansible. And if I desired, I could even go through the process of clicking, you know, run or run, you know, this particular playbook via Ansible Navigator or via Ansible Playbook. In this case, I just right-clicked in this file. So it really gives you a lot of capability to do testing, highlighting, autocomplete, integrate with resource control management, and have that full process from one location with your specific execution environment. So there's a lot of capability. I know it will take some time to learn, but I think this is a very handy tool as you're getting started in Ansible, because now I don't have to dig through and find the exact names, the exact parameters. I can just start searching and going through this process. So what can you do next? Obviously, we have a VS Code blog that the Ansible team wrote. They can look at and see some of these capabilities. I highly encourage you to take the time, download VS Code, implement the extension, start playing around with it and get more comfortable as you start getting used to Ansible playbooks. In many cases, leveraging an IDE is a much easier way to get started, especially if you've never really written anything in YAML or written any Ansible playbooks before. So it's a great way to kind of get started as you go through this. Start small, start simple, write a single playbook, you can even at the start leverage local playbooks that you have and then expand into some sort of source control management tool. But I do highly encourage you to take the chance, get started and expand from there. So thank you for taking the time out and learning a little bit more about how the Ansible VS Code extension can help make playbook writing a little bit easier, especially as you integrate it in with some of the new capabilities of execution environments. Thank you.